Namaste, yogis. It's Anna here. I hope you're all doing really well and having great days all day, every day. <laughs> Today I'm going to teach you or take you through a frontal flowing sequence. Um, so there's lots of hip opening and um, wide leg standing poses. Got some friends outside that are excited about it as well. And I'd just like to um, acknowledge Matthew Baldron, whose um, sequence I got this idea from. I've uh, definitely added my own spice to it. So, as always, take what you like, leave what you don't like, rest when you need to, pause me or turn me off if it's um, not resonating with you today. So, find your way first to a comfortable seat. Once you've found your comfortable seat, invite the eyes to gently close down. Engaging your summer ruti or your even breath. Maybe for a ratio of four, four, five, five, six, six. And straight away feeling that beautiful calmness wash over you as a result of focused breath. Feel into the mat beneath you. The space around and above you, and then the space inside you. Feel the beat of your heart. Listen to the sound of your inhale and your exhale. I'd invite you today to dedicate your practice to yourself. Let it be for you whatever you need it to be. Practicing with love, ahimsa, honesty, satya, and contentment and acceptance, santosha. Bring the hands together at heart center in prayer, Anjali Mudra. If you'd like to join me in one chant of one, take a full inhale breath. Exhale complete. Inhale for one. When you're ready, gently blink open the eyes. Take an inhale breath as you reach up overhead. And on your exhale, right hand reaches long side, right side away. Take a nice side again. Stretch out through your left arm, left arm, maybe gaze up towards the ceiling. Try pressing the left glute down, get a beautiful opening through the lateral line. Inhale, come back to centre. Both hands reach up, left hand presses down. Oh, stretching up overhead. Coming back through your centre. Interlace the fingers, press them away, don't through the upper back, stretch all the tissue between the shoulder blades and then take that up to the ceiling, press up high, ground down through the sit bones. This time press the tops of the hands towards me, pull the shoulder blades apart, beautiful, and then release, make your way into a tabletop position. Might face this way today. This is something a little bit new. <laughs> Start to make your way through the Bhutanasana and Marajasana, cat cow. Any kind of undulation that feels good. Sometimes I forget to include my cervical spine. So make sure you're really bringing your chin up and down throughout the whole undulation. And you can really get some side movement here too. It's whatever feels good. You can put some of your own nice music on. I've got um, lots of really great playlists on Spotify under Anna Spanner. If you want to follow me um, and play some music along with the video. 
Now just to warm through our hands. Send the bottom back towards the heels. Lift the palms of the hands. Try and touch your forearms. Try to keep your arms straight. Shift the weight back forward. Set the shoulders over the elbows, over the hands. But try not to let your hands touch down. Trying to get back to that full stacked tabletop position. Oh, and then let the hands touch down. And just take some circles, distributing the weight. All throughout the palm. Let's take off my watch. Now, spread your fingers as wide as you can. Grip the finger pads back towards the palms. Now put the palm pressing down. Elbow press is rolling forward. And try to scratch up your mat. Try to maintain that throughout the practice. Toes tuck under, bottom comes back towards the heels. Hover the knees off the mat, you're like a turbo child's pose. From here, lift the bottom high. On a inhale breath, take the right leg long. Bend through the right knee. Try to touch your left glute with your right heel. And draw some circles on the ceiling with your right knee. You can press down through the left heel or you can lift it high, whatever feels good. And then come high the left toe, cheeks re extend the right leg long. Step the right foot to the outside of the right hand, hold the left knee down. Reach a bit further forward with your left hand. This might be enough for you here, you can untuck the back toes. If it's there for you to find a bind with your right hand around the left foot, you can come into this beautiful twisting thigh stretch. I love this particular asana. I use it in nearly all of my studio classes because there's just so much goodness happening in it. <laughs> then slowly release, roll the right foot back into face forward, left hand plants underneath the left shoulder, a little hover of the back knee, roll both sets of toes towards the right hand side of your mat, Viparita Skandasana, reaching the right hand back, now we're focusing on the outer left hip, press at the outer right hip rather, press the left hip down to the mat, keep stretching through the whole line of tissue from the bottom of your ribs, Maybe into your left knee. Slowly bring the weight back forward. Step the right foot back to meet the left. Downward facing dog. Left leg lengthens long. Bend through the knee. Either pressing down through the right heel or staying high. You can point the left toes or flex. Whatever feels good for you. Allows you to feel like you've got a little more control over the tissue. And then circles with the knee, just a little bit of mobilization through the hip joint. Re extend the left leg long, and then stepping the left foot to the outside of the left hand. You can turn it to 45 degrees. Right knee rolls down, right hand reaches a little further forward. Untucking the right toes, maybe staying here in this Rutan Christasan variation, or bending up through the right knee, catching the right foot with the left hand and moving the heel towards the right glute. Oh, that feels really delicious. We've been doing a lot of running, so <laughs> hip flexor open up feels amazing. Slowly release your right toes back down to the mat. Bring the right hand in, step on the knee, shoulder left foot faces forward, a little hover of the right knee. Roll both sets of toes towards the left hand side. So you roll it up to the pinky toe edge of both feet. Left arm stretches behind you, lowering your right foot down towards the mat. Oh. Viparita Skandasana. Bring the left hand back to face forward, roll the left foot forward, up high on the right toes, maybe try stretching through the left leg before stepping it back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. When the studio reopens, I'm going to do a dog yoga. So, all of your puppies and doggies that have been practicing along with you can bring them in. <laughs> On an inhale, roll forward into a high plank position. Roll the elbow creases forward, nice open through the upper back. Take a deep inhale breath. On your exhale, we're going to lower down through count of five. Good. Roll your knees, thighs together. Four. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Three. Don't let your, let your legs be floppy. Two. Tuck the navel up into the spine. One. Little hover. Touch down. 
Untuck the toes, inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, Bhujangasana, squeeze the elbows together, press into the tops of the feet. Exhale, lower down. One more, just like that. Exhale, lower. Now press back to a wide knee child. Wide knee child's pose. Lengthen everything long. And maybe actually look pulling yourself forward so you get a nice stretch through the outer arms. And we'll meet in a downward facing dog. Right, so the tips of the toes slowly start to tip your toe forward. Feet settle about, keep distance apart. Take a generous bend in the knees if you like, your hands can rest in the elbow creases as you find yourself here in a really nice loose forward fold. It's also a good opportunity to fix any pointy malfunctions. <laughs> now if you always cross your arms the same way, it'll feel a bit weird, but take the, the fold of the, the crossing of your forearms in the opposite way. Now wherever you are, stay there. Lift all ten toes, spread them wide, big toe, pinky toe touches down. Out of four toes, touch down, big toe lifts. Big toe touches down, out of four toes lift. Then the pinky touches down, then the fourth toe, then the third toe, second toe lifting. Lift the third toe, lift the fourth toe, big toe, and pinky toe touching down. All ten toes lift, spread them wide, and then wave them down one at a time. And then see if you build a bit more depth in your forward fold. Releasing the arms on an inhale breath, roll up. Take a beautiful big shrug up, back and down. Finding yourself in Tadasana. For this sequence, I recommend having your feet about the distance apart so that you've got some nice space to move through the flow. <clears throat> inhale, reach up, pull through the fingertips, gaze follows. On your exhale breath, fold forward, bend deeply through the knees. As you'd like to, inhale, lengthen, halfway lift. On your exhale, step back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale for a cobra or an upward facing dog if you feel warm enough. Exhale, downward facing dog. <clears throat> Deep, full, purposeful breaths. Rise to the toes, gazing forward, bend through the knees on your inhale, make your way to your halfway lift. I like to step forward for my first couple of rounds. Exhale, bow forward, Utanasana. Inhale, rise up tall, Ubrahasthasana. Exhale, Samasthiti. Inhale, reach tall, stretch through the body. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen up, Utanasana. On your exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Udvukha Svanasana, Ujjangasana on your inhale. And on your exhale, Anamukha Svanasana. Inhale the right leg long. On your exhale breath, set the right foot in between the hands, lower the left knee down. Draw the left heel up in towards the glutes. And then hold here. Three, two, one. Toes touch down, hands touch down, step back down with facing door, or take a vinyasa. Left leg lengthens long on an inhale breath. Exhale, step the foot in between the hands. Right knee lowers down, pull the right heel into the glute, and then rise up. Keep fighting to pull that heel in as close as you can. Exhale, toes hips touch down, step back plank or down dog. Take a vinyasa if you choose, take a rest if you choose. Rise to the tips of the toes, bend through the knees, gaze forward, inhale, step hop, float, tippy toe, halfway lift. Exhale, bow. Inhale, rise up tall. Exhale, chair pose. 
Press the hands together, get a nice strong engagement of the whole pectoral and shoulder girdle. And on the next exhale breath, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen, Adhavitanasana. On your exhale, Chaturanga Nandasana. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, right leg, send it long. Exhale, step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Roll to the pinky toe with your both feet, turn them to the right hand side. Viparita Skandasana. Inhale, come forward. Uttan Prishtasana, reach the fingertips forward. Maybe see if you can reach the hands forward. Left hand plants, inhale, reach up, tall, single twist. Exhale, right hand plants, lengthen the right leg. Flex the toes, step back, down and facing dog. Take the yasra if you want to. <clears throat> Inhale, the left leg long. On your exhale, step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. Roll to the pinky toe, edge of both feet, turn them to the left. Viparita Skandasana. Inhale, send everything forward, let the toes reaching forward. Uttan Prasthasana, you should be high on that toe tips, locking everything in and under. If it's there for you, maybe reach the hands forward. Right hand plays up and in the right shoulder. Reach up and over with the left hand, simple twist. And then exhale, left hand plants. Maybe flexing the left. Toes towards the face as you try lengthening the left leg. Step back with as much control as you can. Adam Vinasana. Option to take a vinyasa. Now we've locked the legs try, you can try hopping forward to your chair pose. Maybe take a little tuck handstand on the way there, or just give it a go. No one's going to see you at home. Come to the toes, bend through the knees, gaze forward, inhale. Find your little tuck handstand maybe, and then slowly lower down. Chair pose. Exhale, summer sleepy knee. Final round of our mixed suriha. Brush your fingertips along the mat, sit low, chair pose. On your exhale breath, bow forward. Inhale, lengthen, Adhavitanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Udhumukha. Exhale, Adhamukha. Right leg lengthens long on an inhale breath. Exhale, set the right foot to the outside of the right hand, roll both sets of toes to the right hand side, vipper into skandasana. Now, roll your left foot forward, listen, keep turning at about 45 degrees, roll up on top of the left heel, left toes are flex, coming into your skandasana here. Good. Reach forward, Uttan Prishtasana, maybe without touching the hands down, or touching the hands down, your choice. Hands come inside the right foot, lengthen the right leg long, step back, downward facing dog, or take a vinyasa. <laughs> Always optional these vinyasas. Good for strength building, but you also don't want to cook yourself. So you don't feel like you need it today, don't take it. Left leg lengthens long. Oh, I'm telling you, body. Exhale, step your left foot to the outside of the left hand. Release the left hand as you roll to the pinky toe and your right feet. Vipari to Skandasana. And then sweep the left hand forward. Keep moving so you're facing the right hand side of the mat. Your left foot turn to 45. Roll up on top of the right toe tips. Full Skandasana. Maybe see if you don't need to use your hands to find yourself back in Uttan Prishtasana. Or use the hands. Both hands come inside the left foot. Lengthen the left leg straight, step back, downward facing dog. Option to take the ass up. <clears throat> Knee in your downward facing dog. Rise to the toes, bend through the knees, gaze forward. Maybe try that little tuck hand stand. Maybe a little hover there. 
then make your way into chair pose. Exhale, Samasthiti. <laughs> Inhale, random giggle. Find your way into chair pose. Look at the tassan. Remember the two faces coming out through the crown of the head, the energy traveling up this way instead of out that way. Pressing your feet apart, pulling your knees together. Shift your way into the left leg. Cross the right ankle over the top of the left knee. Galavasana. Now your option would be to stay here. You could come into a toe stand, or if you like to get a bit of air time, I know my students in the studio do, you can come into Ekapada Galavasana Flying Pigeon. So you lock your right foot around the left shoulder, right knee into the right palm pit. Press down and then from that connection with your right leg, you can extend the left leg long and work towards straightening out the arms. Slowly return the Vasana. <coughs> and then rise up. Come into an active external rotation. So you're not pressing your right leg on anything, you're just trying to lift your inner right heel. Left hand comes to the left hip, right hand will either come to the right knee or to the right heel. Open that leg to the side, keep the pelvis space and forward, if it's there for you. Come into ballerina. Now, listen, wherever you went to, try to lock your leg in there. Bring your hands together and heart center, but release, so you're releasing the bind. Bring your right leg forward, hold it, fight for it. On your next exhale breath, slowly brush your right foot past your left, making your way into Virabhadrasana 3. Maybe come a little bit further forward if you can. Sprinkle the fingertips down, look at your back foot, watch it step back. Turn it to about 90 or 85. The left hand can be inside, outside the foot, or even on top of your thigh. Pass for Kanasana. Try and get a beautiful long line all the way along the right side body. Now promise me you'll keep the deck in the front leg. Inhale, Vera 2. Shoulders stacked over the hips. Drift it down the centre finger of the left hand. Keep the bend in this knee with the front palm. Viparita Virabhadrasana. The only thing that's moved here is your torso. Now lengthen through the front leg. Viparita Trikonasana. Inhale to parallel the arms. Vertical through the torso. Exhale, reach as far forward over your left foot as you can and then finding your way into Trikonasana. How many triangles can you make in your body? Triangles are sharp, rigid and aligned. So think about being pointy and sharp in this particular pose. Exhale the gaze down to your left foot. Inhale, rise up. Pick up your left foot, turn it to face forward. On your exhale breath, Find a mind somewhere behind the legs and coming into a crescent variation. Inhale to look up and lengthen. Tend your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Pick up your right foot, turn at 45. On your exhale, find your way into Skandasana over the right leg, the back leg. Good. Now, Send the Skandasana into the front leg, the left leg, as slow and controlled as you can. Plant the right hand, roll up over the top of the right toes. Both sets of feet face towards the left hand side of your mat. Viparita, Skandasana. Come back to full Skandasana. Oh, I know it's confusing. We're going to do that over the right leg now. Send the Skandasana to the right leg. Flexing the left toes. This leg is active and strong. Plant the left hand, roll over the top of the left toe, tips keep going, toes point towards the, the right hand side of your mat as you're facing that direction. Coming back, Skandasana. Beautiful, everybody. And as you send the weight forward, so you can transition into your Uttan Prashasana with the hands reaching forward. Now bring your hand. Quite a bit wider over the left foot. Reach your left hand forward. Send the weight forward. Slip the right foot through. Hover. A bit of animal flow here. Front leg step through. 
a really beautiful sinking of the hips down. You can let your left foot roll to the knife edge, whatever feels good. And from there, we're going to transition into pigeon. So you can bend the right knee out to the side here if that helps you be more comfortable in the hips. Our target area for this pose is the left outer hip. So as long as you're feeling it there and you're not getting any feedback from the knees, then the pose is perfect. Or whatever that means <laughs> for your anatomy. Inhale to look up and lengthen. Exhale, roll the weight to the outside edge of the left leg. Bring the right leg around in front to hover. Stick with it. And then bring it back around behind. Woo! Plant the hands. Step back. Downward facing dog. <clears throat> now, rise to the toes. Bend through the knees, gaze forward. You're going to hop your feet forward to land in the lasana. Now you might like to stay here in the lasana, or if you like to get a bit of air time, you could plant the hands and come into a vipassana. Try to get the knees as high up into the armpits as you can. Lock and load everything up and in, and think what goes in goes up. Maybe try holding it for five breaths. And then we'll meet in a malasana once you've taken your fifth breath. Reach the hands high, go high, take your feet in, summers the hip. <laughs> Good news is we've only got one side to go. Brush the fingertips on the mat, sit low, chair pose, energy out through the crown of your head. Deep, full inhales and exhales. Send the weight to the right leg. Cross the left knee over the top of the left leg while over the top of the right knee. Coming into your Galavasana. You might choose to stay here. Another nice variation is tree. Like just behind me. <laughs> Otherwise, if you're coming into your flying pigeon, get the part of Galavasana. Wrap your left foot around your outer right shoulder. Left knee plugs up into the left armpit. Shift your weight forward, ooh, and then try and lift and lengthen that right leg. And working on lengthening your arms as well. Keep squeezing your elbows together. And then coming out of the pose with control. Maybe you need to hop your way forward if you shuffle a little bit further back. Ooh, bring your hands to heart centre. As you lift your left leg into active external rotation. Then your right hand finds your right hip, left hand either the knee or the left heel, coming into your ballerina pose. Now lock down through your right leg into the earth for a roots. Lock your left leg in where it is, try not to lose your balance. And then bring your hands together at heart centre, leave the left leg there. Bring it through to centre. Fight to lift it. Try not to lose your balance. Woohoo! And then slowly <laughs> shift your left foot past your right, transitioning into your Virabhadrasana three. Maybe go a bit further forward if you can. Left leg is long, arm foot spaghetti. Sprinkle the fingertips down. Slowly step the left foot back, watching it. 85 90 degree angle, and then coming into your Uttita Pajrakanasana, extended side angle. Full deep inhales and exhales. Now keep this right leg bent, your rise will be a two, nothing changes here. Nothing changes here, flip the front palm, reverse.
Now you can lengthen your right leg long. Viparita Trikonasana. Keep squeezing the feet together. On an inhale breath, arms come parallel. Exhale. Reach out over the right leg and then coming into your Trikonasana. Remember, sharp, pointy, angular. There's nothing soft about this pose. Inhale as you rise up. Exhale, turn the right foot to face forward. If you don't have enough space, <laughs> shuffle a bit further back and then trace down the backs of the legs as you come into your proserita variation. <laughs> Squeeze the feet together. You can tell my voice. I'm working here in this pose using my core to pull myself through. I'm looking up at my mula bandha and the energy's going that way. <laughs> you inhale to look up and lengthen. Fingertips take down the knee to the shoulders. Left foot turns 45. On your exhale, find Skandasana over the left leg. Shift the Skandasana to the right leg, the front leg. Then roll over the left toes, plant the left hand. Viparita Skandasana. And then coming back forward, find your sound ass on the right side. Take it to the back leg. Skandasana. Roll over the top of the right toes. Both sets of toes point towards your left. Viparita Skandasana. Find your sound ass here again. And remember on this one, we're coming forward, moving into our Uttan Krishnasana. Maybe see if you can stretch your hands forward. Left hand plants quite a bit further to the left, so there's some space. You can turn your right foot across. Reach your right arm forward. Front leg step through. Hold the leg. Try not to let the bottom touch down. We've got five together. So four more. Not after this one, that was the fourth one. <laughs> Three more. This last one, we're going to hover. Stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. Step back. Ooh, and then lower the left knee down. Oh, that's spicy. Forearms come down. <clears throat> Bit of a shout out to one of my best friends, Alicia Smith, who taught me my level one animal flow. That's um, a bit of a tribute to her there. <laughs> Oh, so feeling this beautiful wizard. And maybe having a little more space in the tissue that you've now warmed and worked, hydrated, releasing some junk from the hips. From here, you transition into your Ekapada Raja Kapitasana, or La Pigeon, as Matthew would say. Remember the left knee can bent out to the side. Find whatever space you have here and then melt into it. Thanks for 
Pilate muscles just here. So I really feel this pose there. But it's so good. It feels like a, a really nourishing, even though it's spicy, a real nourishing opening for me. Inhale to look up and lengthen. Exhale and release. We're coming into a little position now. I'm just going to turn to face you. So, <clears throat> wide leg uh, forward fold. So, from here, coming to whatever space you've got, try not to curl through the back. So, if you're really hunching here, I'd say sit up tall or press your feet against the wall as you're facing the wall. And it'll, um, it'll really help you focus on the groin. Or you can press your back up against the wall. If you've got a little bit more space to stretch forward, I'm going to stay here for five breaths. Coming back through to centre, we can take um, a side bend now in this pose. So, folding over the right leg, keeping the torso open, maybe aiming to get your left hand to contact the right toes, feeling a stretch along the whole side, left side body, that's where we're focusing now. And release, come up through centre, take it over the left leg. Don't worry if the bind's not here, this can be just as or more effective. If the bind's there for you, make sure you're not cheating and turning the right shoulder down. Keeping it open because this tissue here is the target area. Come back through the centre and <clears throat> we're going to make our way onto our backs. <clears throat> if you have wheel in your practice, we haven't really done any shoulder opening, but please feel free to take wheel if it's in your practice. Otherwise, I'm going to talk to Bridge and we're going to take it with a variation. You're going to cross your right ankle over the top of the left knee, just like we did in a standing sequence. Hold the outer edge of your mat and exactly the same way you enter up into Bridge. You stand the left foot down, lengthening the crown of the head away from the pelvis, turning on the core to support you and then lift up and open. You're going to get a beautiful hip opener as well as an extension. A little bit more bang for your buck. Now draw your right knee into the midline and then foot touches down. Massage each vertebrae as you go down to the mat. <clears throat> little windscreen wipe action if you'd like to take it. And then we'll move to the other side. Left ankle crosses over the top of the right knee. This time I like to hold the outer edges of my mat, but whatever works for you. If you're coming up into wheel, you could try this variation as well. Just be careful. And then draw the knee into the midline of the body. Release the left foot. Plant it down next to the right foot and then slowly, slowly lower down. Now to focus some of the extension to our upper spine, we're going to take fish pose. So, prop yourself up on your elbows and then try squeezing your shoulder blades together so you can puff up your sternum towards the sky. If you feel safe there, you can gaze behind you. If that feels okay, shuffle your elbows closer towards the hips and you might even be able to get the crown of the head down towards the mat and then maybe reach the arms over here. Bring your elbows down to the mat, press into them, draw the chin towards the throat and then slowly, slowly roll down. 
Bring the knees up in towards the chest. Make any little movements here that feel good. Maybe do an invader or just circles. And then coming into Happy Baby, Ananda Balasana. Now any other finishing poses you like to take in your practice, please feel free. In fact, let's take a twist. We haven't actually taken a twist. So cross the left leg over the top of the right. Shift the hips over towards the left hand side of your mat. And then take a supine twist with the knees towards the right. to centre, reposition the hips, unwrap, wrap the opposite direction, hips over towards the right, right leg over the top of the left, oh, oh, oh. coming into that beautiful Supta Matsi and Drasana. Stay there for as long as you like and when the spirit moves you, you'll enter into the final resting place of Shavasana. I'd recommend staying here for 6 to 10 minutes if you can. Recalling your intention or your dedication and sinking into the earth, the full weight of the body to the mind.